Hello, I'm Paul Kononoff, Professor of Dairy Nutrition and Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Today I spoke about feed characterization. Uh, what I did is spend some time outlining uh, what characterization is and how we can use that information. Uh, feed characterization really has two major elements to it. Uh, the first is describing the chemical composition or the concentration of nutrients in a feed and the second is uh, outlining the digestibility or bioavailability of those nutrients. Um, and one of the things I mentioned early on in my presentation is that it's absolutely critical when you're characterizing feed to um, identify, correctly identify the feed samples. And I talked about a simple example about how corn gluten needs to be characterized as either corn gluten feed or corn gluten meal. And the importance of uh, understanding what that feed is and not assuming that they're both the same as in corn gluten. Um, secondly, I spent some time talking about um, um, uh, comparing different commodities that are used in the dairy industry. It's an opportunity to lower the crude protein uh, content of the diet by adding supplemental amino acids, uh, thereby hopefully increasing milk protein but also decreasing nitrogen excretion. Um, several assays that are commonly used are uh, looking at the uh, response of the animal uh, in either blood plasma amino acid or milk protein uh, when supplementing the diet with a rumen protected amino acid. And uh, I illustrated a study which did indeed show that as you include uh, a rumen protected amino acid that plasma concentrations can increase and milk protein can increase. In this case it was with the addition of either plasma, uh, with the addition of either rumen protected methionine or lysine. Uh, the animals seem to respond with the methionine through plasma methionine. However, the response was not observed for the lysine. Several reasons that that could be. One is that uh, the, uh, the product may not have delivered the expected uh, lysine that was uh, included in the rumen protected amino acid. The second is this may be somewhat of a, uh, a unique amino acid that gets used for other bodily functions before the mammary gland has a chance to utilize it. So it's important uh, in when looking at these assays to not only focus on uh, the end result but to understand that there may be interactions between the type of rumen protected amino acid and the assay being used. Um, but then also it's important to observe the responses in the animals, whether that's in a research setting or a production setting, because ultimately uh, what we want to know is how these uh, feeds and products work in the animal. And it's important to validate animal responses um, as, as a final end game uh, when looking at changes in ration formulation.